Today we're going to install this NOCO onboard charger so I can charge my auxiliary batteries from shore power. And I, I really want to know where the road goes. Okay. Perfect. All right, so first thing in my in this box is actually something that I already own, but I bought a different version of. So we're going to be setting up uh, shore power charging. So one of my more recent videos, we installed this AC port plug uh, for a 15 amp shore power plug, but I wanted, I decided I wanted to use the one that had two um, outlets, that way I'm not gonna have to plug my charger into my power strip. I'll be able to just have it plugged right into here. Then as soon as this is plugged in, the the battery charger should fire up and work on its own. And I'm not running unnecessary curtain, current through my power strip. But this is the exciting bit. So I had thought that maybe I would go ahead and use just a normal garage car charger. Um, but seeing the quality of the port plug when I installed it, and then looking into these, um, I decided I wanted to get something a little bit more purpose-built. Most of those garage chargers, uh, they have alligator clamps, and of course I could cut those off and put ring terminals on, but this thing is going to um, provide everything I need. Uh, and it's a smart charger, just like my SeaTech, except Obviously, it works off of AC power, not the power coming out of the alternator. This thing's actually pretty cool. It's got charge profiles for AGM, which I need. Uh, it also has a charge profile for lithium, which uh, my SeaTech doesn't, but the new version of the SeaTech does. And uh, it's actually got a repair mode, which I might go ahead and try and run. The the SeaTech DC to DC charger does have a disulfation mode. Um, but I'm not entirely sure that it works, and my voltage has been a little bit iffy on my battery and seeming to drain a little quicker than it should be. So I might go ahead and run this 12 volt repair cycle on there and see if it makes a difference. The reviews on this thing were actually really excellent. Something that's interesting about it is it's waterproof. The fact that it's waterproof also means that if you have a, uh, a truck or a van that has two batteries under the hood, you could mount this thing somewhere inside the uh, engine bay and not have to worry about it uh, getting wet. And that's also kind of, you could also use one of these, run a AC port plug into your bumper or something. Man, this thing is packaged nice. That cardboard was kind of chintzy, but. Oh, hoo, 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 hoo. <laughs> look at that. Man, they package this thing well. Holy cow, it's bigger than I thought it would be, but that's okay. And heavier. Wow, this thing's kind of a chunk, huh? All right. So it comes with some self-tapping screws for mounting it. Uh, I might use slightly different ones because I'm going to be mounting this to my power wall. But there you go. Look at that thing. It's got some rubber on the back. So for a little bit of vibration protection and to protect uh, paint if you're going to be mounting this. Uh, up against a painted surface. Of course we've got the AC in, which is going to be plugged in to one of the power port plugs. And it comes with the ring terminal connections that'll go to my auxiliary battery. It's already fused. I can just tell this is really high quality. Something else that's cool uh, that I read is that it, it has memory. It'll remember what mode you left it on, so you don't have to make sure you pick, like AGM in my case, every time. If you select AGM, as soon as it gets power, it'll go back to AGM. This model that I got, they have several different versions of this so that can charge multiple battery banks. This one I got is the 10 amp one bank version, and it should be able to charge my battery. I have a 92 amp hour battery in about six and a half hours according to the data sheet which is easily like an overnight plug-in so that'll be nice because if i don't quite fully charge my battery on my way back from a trip 
uh, I don't have to like be starting my journey with a not fully charged battery. So now anytime I leave and I unplug the van, I know my battery is going to be topped up. Uh, this particular one cost about $120, uh, maybe it was $110 on Amazon, I'll put a link down below. But you can also, if you have multiple battery banks that you want to charge independently, look at the other models of this too. So this thing's kind of a chunk, huh? It's kind of heavy. Uh, I'm hoping that my power wall can actually handle the weight of this thing because it's just a thin piece of uh, board that I've mounted everything to. This is even heavier than my SeaTac or anything that I have on there really, so I guess time will tell. But before we do that, I'm gonna have to pop out my uh, single port AC plug and replace it with this dual port one. Here's the new one that has two plugs. I'll just go ahead and plug one this one in right now. There we go. And and you want to snug these things up pretty well. You can see that it's it's definitely squishing this weather seal in, but what you don't want is to over tighten them and have it start pulling the metal through and essentially strip it out. There we go. So this is my power wall and the rest of this uh, project's just going to be taking place in here. So I just need to remove this face panel and uh, pull it out and then I think I'm going to mount the uh, the charger right here. So here's the end that the charger is going to plug into. And I'll feed the battery wires down over to the batteries. And those just connect positive and negative. Pretty straightforward. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball where I want this. And then what I'm gonna do, I think, is get a drill bit. I need it to be at least as big to fit uh, this plug through. Now that should, oh yeah, easily fit through there. Probably could have done a smaller one. So where these, where the AC cable and the battery cables come down, I'm going to cut out a couple little holes and then make a whole channel up to that bigger hole that I just drilled so that they can be tucked away neatly, channel, channel, so the wires can go in. Idea being that gets tucked in there. There it is. Oh, that's perfect. That's even better than I thought. The holes are pretty much hidden and the cables just go right in. Once this is mounted, no ugly cables hanging out anywhere. So the cables will be behind the wall and then come out the side and go to the battery. Okay, so I got the wires run over to the battery and now it's just a case of uh, plugging it in and screwing it into the board. So let's go ahead. We're gonna go ahead and get the uh, the charger plugged in to the power port and then plug the van in and we should be charging. Right. I'm gonna go plug it in and see if it lights up. See the little power light came on, so we'll press that. 
press to hold it. Oop. There we go. 12 volt AGM. Make, okay. So I'm just gonna let this thing sit and do its thing. Probably come back in the morning and uh, see if the voltage has changed on the meter. Right now it's sitting at about 12.6 volts. Alright, so it's been running all night. I'm gonna flick this on here. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna see if I can turn this off and see what the battery levels out at. So it looks like it's leveled off about 12.8. So it obviously did its job. Gave it a little bit more charge. Uh, we started about 12.5, 12.6. Now we're sitting at 12.8 after sitting on the float charge all night so it seems to be working so that's all there was to it it's a pretty simple install literally just plug in the charger connect the two cables to the battery and that's that as you can see it's sitting here on a maintain charge right now which is exactly what it should be doing i did run the repair cycle and i don't know if it made a difference we'll have to see uh how the battery behaves the next time i take the van out but uh, I'm pretty excited about it. it. Looks like NOCO has made a pretty good product here. Um, it certainly seems to be really well built. Time will tell in the future if I have any issues. Uh, I don't expect that I will though. So like I said earlier, there will be some links to this thing down below. You can check it out. They have different uh, versions and variations of this same charger available in different amperages and for different amounts of battery banks. But I'm pretty happy with my choice to go with this charger. The next thing I got to do is add some solar power to my SeaTech charger. And my bases will be covered for charging my auxiliary battery. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in a comment down below. And uh, I will see you guys on the next video. If you'd like to follow along with the rest of our adventures, make sure to subscribe. And to make sure you don't miss out on any other videos, click the notification bell as well.